Okay, so I'm Kate, I'm the sample machinist here at Merchant and Mills and we are just going to talk through some of the more complicated construction points on our beautiful painting jacket. So, these pockets, the top pockets are just patch pockets but the bottom pockets are a bit more special. So they've got, um, it's sort of a half bellows pocket, it has a gusset at the bottom and at the side, both of which means you get more room to put stuff in there. Um, and also you can go in through the top, but you can also go in through the side. So you get two pockets for the price of one. Um, and obviously this, there's a little mitered corner down here. So obviously this is a little bit more complicated to make than a standard pocket. So we're going to go into that in a bit more detail. And then the button placket as well. This, so this is buttoning right over left, which is traditional for a women's jacket, but you can do it the other way around. Um, and then inside here, we've got a hidden piece where your buttonholes go and that's all tucked under and top stitch so again that can be a bit tricky it can get a bit bulky in these corners so if you're worried about your sewing machine maybe give that a little practice first um, but we're going to go into a lot more detail on how this is constructed as well perfect <laughs> Okay, this is the painted jacket hip pocket. Um, they've all been marked with the tailor stack at the top, which shows where the button position is. Um, and that's a really useful thing to have because it shows you which way up your pocket is at all times. And there are marks, I've just made little marks where the tailor's tags are just so it's a bit clearer. Um, and Throughout this video, what I've done is when we've stitched something, the most recent stitching will be in red. So hopefully that will make it easier to see. So the first thing to do is to join up the tailor sacks at this V corner and to stay stitch uh, just a couple of centimeters either side of the point in the middle. Um, and because it's a stay stitch, you want to do it on quite a small stitch. So literally just a centimeter either. And you want to hit this point in the middle exactly so then you'll have something that looks like this um so i've stitched right to that corner and out again and then just clipped in right to the stitching but not through it just so you've got that corner secured and then the next thing you're going to do is press in so there's a notch at the top again this is the top because that's where the buttonhole is and uh, there's a notch at the top and a notch at the bottom if you just draw a line on there and join those up and press that to the wrong side then you end up with something like this and I've also just marked through these marks here these tailors tags here just so I've got them on the outside because that's going to be the next step so after you've pressed that side in you're going to press along these two lines, wrong sides together. So press that line and press that line. So then you end up with this. And this is where the fun bit starts. So to get the lovely mitered corners, you need to essentially this line, this fold line is gonna meet this fold line here. So you need to fold your pocket diagonally like this and you're folding it on this tailor tag that's at the corner and you want this mark this notch tailor tag whatever you've done to meet exactly to the point of your stay stitching on the other side so when you stitch you're going to stitch from the corner to this point and that point needs to be right on top of the inside of your V of stay stitching. And you don't want to stitch into your seam allowance, you want to stop there. Um, you can stitch it from this side, but you just need, which is quite useful, you can see your stay stitching then and that helps you, but you need to make sure that you stop at this point and you don't catch any of this seam allowance. And then you just do the same thing on the other side. So move that seam allowance out of the way, fold this one diagonally, again, this point here needs to match exactly to the V of your stay stitching. Stitch that, stop there, Keep make sure your seam allowances are free. 
and then what you have is something like this. Uh, so I've just trimmed the corners off there and trimmed the seam allowance down a bit. So you have something that looks like this. And then in the, between these two fold lines that you've already pressed in, you've got another notch here, which lines up with the point of your V. And you're just gonna press along that line and then edge stitch along this edge to hold it together. So that's what I've done here, if you can see that. And then the next thing, you're gonna do your pocket hem. So at the top, you're folding in 1.5 and then pressing that, and then you fold another, again, you've got a notch on either side. Press that and edge stitch along there. And at the bottom, you're gonna fold 1.5. Again, you've got notches, but you're gonna fold that to the right side of the fabric and just press that and then leave that till later. So I've got my top hem, which has been edge stitched and my bottom hem pressed up. Now we are, at this point, you can press your corners through. You'll need to turn them back through for the next step, but it's quite a good moment to do it. So if you have a point presser or point turner, one of these, a good way to press these open is just to get the point in. You want to press the seam open flat. Same again, point goes into the point, press the seam open flat. And then with one of these guys, just turn them through. And what you're looking for, I think this, this bit is the bit that's a bit tricky, is your seam is right in the middle of that square. It's not on the edge. So you don't want to press it like that. You want to press it with the seam flat and press that through and they should stack up nicely. So that's the front of my pocket. I can tell because I've got my button mark. That's the back of my pocket and my mitered corners line up one on top of the other and you can press that. And then once you've done that, you're gonna edge stitch along here and along here So I've edge stitched along this edge and along this edge, keeping it clear of everything else. So you're just literally just stitching through that folded edge. And then once you've done that, you need to go back inside. And this edge here, so it's the shaped edge. I think we refer to it in the instructions as a shaped edge. So it's the much wider edge, the one you pressed earlier it's got a shape to it not the straight edge and you're going to line up the raw edges and stitch a 1.5 centimeter seam and it will match up it will stop at this point which is the end of your mitering of the corners so those go together those raw edges go together and then you stitch a 1.5 centimeter seam and it should hit this point exactly. And then you can overlock it and trim it down a bit. So what you end up with is something like this. So that's where I've done my, my machine line and then I've overlocked it. And then the next thing you wanna do, just turn this pleat at the bottom so on the straight edge, you've got a pleat that opens up at the bottom. That one's already been edge stitched. So with your front of the pocket towards you, so you can tell it's the front because it's got the hem, the deep hem and the buttonhole on the outside. The button, sorry. Um, this pleat, you just want to fold that up towards the front, keep the back out of the way, 
and stitch just to hold that in place. We're going to stitch just inside the seam line, so 1.4 centimetres away from the raw edge, literally just from here to here to hold this pleat in place, like so. So you've just got that pleat, but the back is still free. You've just got that pleat held, and then you're going to wrap the back around it and up the front, matching your edges at the top. And again, stitch 1.5 centimeter seam and overlock it. And that's what you end up with. And then you can turn it through one more time. And you have your finished pocket. You can give it a press and then it's ready to go on your jacket. So you've got a kind of gusset there and there, and then this edge is just flat. So once you've got to that point, you pin it to your jacket front. I've got my jacket front, I've marked the corners. That's the buttonhole, so I know that's the wrong way up. And the first thing you're going to do is go in here and stitch it on that edge. That's a folded edge. So again, you can see, hopefully see because it's in red, that that's just stitched all the way along, just on that edge. So nothing else is attached at that point. And then the next thing you're going to do is stitch 2.5 centimeters down here three centimetres from up, there's a mark, there's a notch here on your pattern for end of stitching line, I think it says. You're going to stitch around there and then moving all of this out the way along that bottom edge. So just this top edge here for 2.5 centimetres and then three centimetres and then along the bottom. So that's what this looks like when that's been stitched along there and then along the bottom there. And the next bit of stitching is you start 1.5 centimeters in from this top hand corner, go along and then down to this bottom edge. So again, hopefully you can see in the red, stitch from here down to here. And you can see this is all still free. That's still free, you can still get in there. Then you're just going to do another stitch to secure this corner, so 1.5 in either direction. There, 1.5, 1.5. And then if you want to, you can do optional bar tacks to stop the corners. So one here, one here, one here. You can do that either through all the layers or you can just, if you can get in there, you can just do it underneath. And another one here. Um, if you don't want to do a bar tack through all those layers, you could just do a straight stitch just to reinforce those corners. So there's one, two, and then underneath three and four. And that is your finished pocket. So you can go in from the top, or you can go in from the side, and then you just put your pocket flaps on and you're all done. Okay, so this is the concealed button placket for the painter jacket. Um, so I've done the preparatory steps as in the instructions. So with the left front, so this is a, a jacket closing left over right. If you want to do right over left, then obviously this is, you'd have to reverse all of this. So I've done the stay stitching. There are three notches on the top here and you stay stitch just either side of this third notch. I have trimmed away 1.5 centimeters seam allowance down the front to up to this point. And I have machined, this is the button placket. I've just marked my buttonholes on here so you can see them. Um, and I've just folded it and machined over the top. And you know that that's the top because the buttonhole is nearer the top. And this is the way round. So you've got a fold line notch and you need your raw bit of fabric on that side. So I've just machined across there and then you can clip your corner and stagger your seam allowance and turn that 
through and press it along the fold line and do your buttonholes. So I've done just some pretend buttonholes so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so this is then, just gonna undo that. This is my placket with my buttonholes and you can see there's this raw 1.5 centimeter seam allowance on one side and this is my folded edge and that's my top edge because the buttonhole's nearest it and then at the bottom here i've pressed under 1.5 centimeters and i've marked four centimeters up which again is notched which is the hemline so at this point you're putting the bottom of your button placket so that it sits just underneath your hemline. So I think it says in the instructions 3.9 centimeters up from the bottom instead of four and three millimeters in from your fold line. So I've marked the fold line, which is again notched at either end. So that line, this is my 1.5 centimeter seam line. I've just chalked this on. Um, that sits just underneath the hemline and three millimeters away from the fold line on your front jacket. And you're gonna stitch across there and stop 1.5 centimeters from the end, but also it's where, it's where your underneath fabric stops, is where your raw edge stops. So you're just gonna stitch across there like that. So I've done that in the red. Hopefully you can see that there. And you can then trim across your corner and trim down your seam allowance. And then once you've done that, you're gonna fold along your fold line. So it's three millimeters away from the edge of your placket. You're gonna fold that in and stitch on your hemline. So your hemline is four centimeters. So it's just, just above this line here. It's four millimeters millimeters four centimeters up from the bottom so this stitch line is 3.9 and then you're stitching right next to that but you need to make sure that you folded on your fold line which will give you a little gap of three millimeters or so between the edge of your jacket and the button placket so stitch across there and then at the top you're stitching as far as your center front notch, which is this notch here, 1.5 centimeter seam allowance, stitch across the top, stop level with this notch. So just to hopefully make that a little bit clearer, um, I've stitched, so this is my original stitching, my 3.9 centimeter stitching, and then now this is my new stitch line. And then at the top, again, I've stitched Level with to level with the notch, and I'm going to clip in right to that point there. Clip my seam allowance, clip my corners, trim my seam allowance down again, clip the corners at the bottom as well. Clip across here, trim my seam allowance down, and turn both of those corners through. Once you've done that, what you end up with is something like that. So this comes out the bottom. Then you can top stitch your front edge. So you're coming down from your raw edge straight down past your where you've clipped in. And then I'm a foot's width away from the edge along and then all the way down, stopping at the bottom. And you want this piece to be out of the way while you're doing that. But then once you've done that, you can fold it up and pin it. Actually, before you do that, sorry, you want to just use this as a template, basically to fold your seam allowance back and press it. So you're gonna unfold it again because you need to wrap it around this raw edge over here. But while this is flat, it's a good way of doing it. You just take that to the iron and press the seam allowance along the edge of this and that gives you a nice edge to push it against. Then you can fold your 
start and flap it up and pin it in place. And we're going to wrap that raw edge around the raw edge underneath. So this piece here, where that's already been cut down, you can just fold that under. And then this edge goes around the raw edge. So you're encasing the raw edges of your button placket in this edge. And it's a good idea to tack this. And actually, if you just do it through those two layers, then you can make sure that you really are getting it close to the edge. This corner, you may want to trim a bit out if you're using a very heavy fabric. In this fabric, it's okay. I can just tack it under. So I'm wrapping my seam allowance around. And once that's all in place and tacked, I'm going to edge stitch along the folded edge all the way down and then do another row of top stitching foot width away from that. So I've stitched down my edge. You have to come in, if you want to keep a straight line, it, you are slightly further in on the, on the button placket, obviously. And then another line foot width away. And then to finish it, you can either do bar tacks or I've just done straight stitches here, just so you can see a different. If you um, can just use the stitching line from your first row of top stitching and go over it evenly between. So you can see it's just caught the button placket on the inside, halfway between each buttonhole and then at the very top edge. And then that's your button placket finished. Ta-da!